Hello, my name is Bearhead. We're introducing a new cooking program for public television. It's called Cooking with the Colonel, meaning Colonel Doug Allard, who is a gourmet chef unknown to me for quite a few years, but he's quite good at his art, and he will be showing you how to cook deer, elk, commodities, whatever you have. He's uh, quite good at it, and we hope you'll enjoy the program. Hi, welcome to the program Cooking with the Colonel. We hope that uh, we'll enjoy presenting this to you and that you'll enjoy it when you see it. Uh, cooking has been my hobby for 20 years or longer. I thoroughly enjoy it. I think it's hard sometimes and easy sometimes, but I do enjoy it all the time. After a hard day at work, I can come home and be dead tired, start cooking and just feel good about the whole thing. It just kind of refreshes me. We're gonna cook some interesting things for you here in the wild meat line. Today, we're gonna to make a reservation deer Swiss steak. Many people who eat wild game don't really enjoy the taste of deer very much and some kids don't like it. So what we're gonna to try to do is give you a couple of recipes that will guarantee that your entire family will like it when you feed them deer meat. Uh, keep in mind that when you're dealing with wild game, the first important ingredient of a good piece of meat on your table is how it's taken care of in the field. A good shot that doesn't ruin a lot of meat is the first thing. Secondly, when you clean the deer, Make sure that, you, if all possible, you don't cut any of the intestines and get any of it on the meat. If you do, wash it off. After you get your deer cleaned, be sure that you get it cooled good. We always put a stick across the ribs, so uh, stretch it out this way so that your cavity is open more, the deer has a chance to cool. If you're gonna hang it and butcher it yourself, hang it for about a week. If you're gonna take it to the market, to the butcher, then he'll hang it for the proper amount of time for you. But keep in mind that a good piece of meat doesn't get there just by accident. You have to take good care of the meat, the carcass, uh, when you get it. But deer meat is excellent. It has very little fat. It's good and healthy for you. So we're gonna take uh, some time today and show you how we do reservation deer Swiss steak. The first thing you do is to Cut up the vegetables we're using today, onion, garlic, and celery. We have these in butter here. We're sauteing them right now. And we, I like to use butter in nearly everything. You have to saute these until your vegetables are tender. When you, you'll know that they're tender when you see the onion and the garlic turning just a little bit yellowish and if they're not really tender when you put them in the final dish then what will happen is that you'll always get a little chunky taste to them and that's really not very good when you're making things like Swiss steak. Uh, the meat and we have some beautiful little deer round steaks here today. The meat we're going to put in some flour that I've put salt, pepper, garlic powder in I'll show you how we do this. The reason you do that, not only does the, the uh, salt, pepper, and garlic powder add to the flavor, the flour gives your finished Swiss steak a little more consistency, and it also holds the juices into the meat. So we pound that in just a little bit with this little tool that's very simple, it's, you can use anything really to do this. You could use the edge of a knife blade or the back of a, of a cleaver, so anything that has a little point to it. And you just pound the flour, salt, pepper, garlic powder in a little bit. If you're a little short, get a little more flour. When it kind of all turns white, you have it just about the right amount. This little tool also tenderizes the meat even to my way of thinking better than that that's tenderized by the butcher because it doesn't really chop it up. Sometimes the butcher tenderizes it so much 
that it seems like you're actually cooking hamburger. And I don't like a piece of steak to taste like a piece of hamburger. So you pretty much here have all of your meat impregnated now with the flour and the seasonings. Then we're going to take that, put it in the frying pan with some hot oil. And when you do that, you're going to brown it on each side. This is what it should look like when it's browned on one side. And it does. You have to have your oil hot enough so that it's sizzling. When your oil is sizzling, that will heat your meat to the temperature that will sear it on the outside, keep all the juices and flavors on the inside, and also impregnate it with the spices that you put in there with your flour. So this has been browned on one side. When you see a little blood come out on the other side, you can flip it over again. And then we're ready to go from there. We're going to turn our heat down a little bit. And to this, we're going to add the vegetables that we've done, the onion, garlic, and celery. We're going to spread those around over the top of this. Kind of mix it around a little bit so some's on top of the meat, some's down in the pan. And then we're going to add the ingredients that most Swiss steak doesn't have. We're going to put in a small can of tomatoes, same way, all around. We're going to put in a jar of salsa. And then we're going to add, believe it or not, about half a can of green enchilada sauce. Gonna mix that all around good, kind of loosen your meat on the bottom so that you know that none of it is stuck. Everything will kind of take care of itself here. It'll mix around as it's cooking. Then we're going to turn the heat down to medium low, which is about three or four, three and a half on my electric stove. And we'll simmer that for about 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to serve that with uh, some boiled potatoes, which I'm going to put on here in just a minute, and some sliced tomatoes. And we'll have Bearhead come back and be our judge, see how it tastes. He's a pretty, pretty hard judge. I don't often get a 10 from him, but we'll see how he does today.
This technique that we're using today on the deer meat happens to be uh, about a three-year-old young mule deer buck. This recipe and all the other recipes that we use on deer meat work equally, equally as well with elk, moose, mountain sheep. Uh, they're nearly interchangeable, keeping in mind that a mule deer buck late in the season during or after the rut has a strong flavor. So if you get one of those, you have to treat the meat very, very carefully and you're going to get some deer flavor that you may not like even in the hamburger. So these recipes that we're giving you here are designed to eliminate some of the bad deer flavor, if you want to call it that, and make a piece of deer meat that everybody in your family can eat. Uh, if you're like me and you like the deer flavor, then all you need to do is throw it in the frying pan with some salt and pepper, put a little onion on it and eat it that way. Most people don't like it as well that way. I do, but I also like the way we're going to cook it today. If you get an old raunchy tasting muley buck, and you like it plain, have at it. Most people don't, I don't. I like good deer meat, but the kind of tasty ones uh, are a little beyond me. That's why I put them in Swiss steak like this or cook them in some other manner. The next thing we're gonna cook for you today, ladies and gentlemen, is the my most favorite part of any game animal, and that's the tenderloin or the backstrap, as some people call it. This particular tenderloin is off a young mule deer buck, about a three-pointer. And we're going to cook the tenderloin, and then we're going to make garlic, onion, and mushroom sauce to serve over it. If you really like the taste of deer meat, don't put the sauce on it. If you want to enhance it a little bit, put the sauce on. First thing we're going to do is put some butter here in our frying pan. Let that get melted down a little bit. Then we're going to saute our garlic, onion, mushrooms in there. I always put the onions in first. I really don't know why, except they take a little longer to cook. The garlic doesn't take too long. But I throw it in there about the same time anyway. Mushrooms take quite a bit longer, so while we're uh, doing the garlic and onion, we'll take the, the little tenderloin here, cut it into about the size pieces you can eat, about a serving size. For me, one of the whole back straps is about a serving. And all I do with this is to salt and pepper it. A lot of people don't salt and pepper their meat before they cook it. Some cookbooks will tell you that salt before you cook it makes it dry. And maybe it does, but I always like it to get on the plate and already taste good. Might add a little pepper to it. I use a lot more pepper than I use salt. Over the years, my family's come, become used to pepper on nearly anything. And when you see my kids sit down and eat, first thing they do is put pepper on everything because nobody else uses the amount of pepper I do. I think pepper gives meat a good flavor. Uh, it add something that other spices don't really add, and I like it. We'll turn on our burner here to get started with our steak. In the meantime, we'll put the mushrooms in here and Mix them up with the garlic and onion. Then I'm going to put a little soy sauce in there. This particular kind has to be, it happens to be a Chinese 
sweet soy sauce, but regular soy sauce works fine. This just gives you a little sweeter taste than the other does. But uh, primarily, you're trying to cook this down, saute it enough so that you get actually, instead of big lumps of vegetables, you're trying to cook it down so that you get a, kind of a chunky sauce out of it. Turn that up just a little bit. I always use vegetable oil to cook everything in if I'm not using butter supposed to be better for you. I think it gives everything a good flavor. When you cook these little tenderloins, they don't take very long to cook. You want to have your pan hot, your oil hot. You're going to put them in and they're just going to sizzle. And you, you cook them on kind of high heat. I move them around just a little bit in the pan so they don't stick. Stick your fork under the edge. Move them a little bit so you get some oil under, under each one. When you hear a nice sizzle, that means that they're doing, doing just right. It also means that you have to watch them pretty close. You, uh, can't put them on and go watch uh, Monday night football or you'll come back and have nothing but a bunch of jerky, which isn't too bad, but this isn't the way you make jerky. The tenderloin, I always cook kind of medium, not real well done because it's such a good piece of meat. If you cook it too well done, it's going to dry out on you a little bit and not really taste as good. Our sauce here is coming along pretty good. We'll get it cooked down a little bit. See, those have only been on there a couple of minutes and they're just about done on the one side. Get them just a little bit browner. I'm not uh, ashamed to turn them over again if I don't get them the right uh, doneness the first time. A lot of people say you're only supposed to turn a piece of meat once, but uh, I've been known to turn them a lot more than that. See, there you got a kind of a look on these now. They've got just a slight brown flavor to them. You can tell that they're done on that side. Cook them on this side, hoping that our sauce here will be finished about the same time. nice big mushrooms in there and the garlic I used was elephant garlic which is much milder than regular garlic and uh, there's a lot more to it a clove of elephant garlic is about the size of your thumb a clove of regular garlic is about the size of your fingernail a little bit bigger so I like the flavor of garlic so I use the elephant garlic because it gives you uh, a lot more volume and a very very mild flavor but mixed with the onion, mushroom, soy sauce. It makes a nice sauce for anything and especially nice for a, a nice deer tenderloin. If you're not sure if your meat's done, take a knife, look at your thickest piece here. Cut into it, 
it's still red in the middle, and that's not the way you like it, it's not done yet. Nobody will ever know you cut into there because after you cook it, it kind of heals itself back up. And these still are a little red in the middle, so we'll go a little longer on them. You have to kind of keep sauteing your vegetables here, mix them up a little bit, to stir them up a little bit so that it doesn't burn. But see, you're getting a nice brown flavor, brown color from the soy sauce in there, and when you Serve it on the plate. Looks real good. Well, I'll cut into another one now, see how we're doing. Well, right now we're at rare. Not many people like deer meat rare, so we're going to cook it just a little bit longer till we get it to the medium stage, which is where we're going to uh, eat the tenderloins today. Now I'm going to turn it over again, since we need a little longer on it. I use plenty of oil when I cook. I don't, I don't really skimp on the oil. It doesn't make it really greasy, I don't think, but it does allow you to cook your things evenly. If you just use a tiny bit of oil, then you're going to stick from time to time. That's going to stick in different places. And uh, I really don't like that. Our sauce is coming along really good there. It's going to be ready just about the time our steaks get done. Try another one. Now we still got rare on that one. Sometimes I butterfly the tenderloin and take a piece like this, and instead of cooking it that thick, slice it down about seven eighths of the way through, bend it over, flop it on, then you cook them in about a minute and a half on each side. Uh, this takes a little bit longer. I, this is an exceptionally nice piece of meat, so I don't mind taking a little longer to cook it. Remember that if you overcook meat, the longer you cook it beyond a certain stage, the tougher it gets. So if you overcook it, you're going to end up with a t tough piece of meat. Even though you're using a nice thing here like the tenderloin, you're going to end up with a tough piece. The first recipe that I made for you today, the Reservation Deer Swiss Steak, has a lot of ingredients you've never heard of before in Swiss Steak, and I'll tell you how uh, it came around to that. Uh, one day I had some round steak, and I had one can of tomatoes, and I didn't have anything else, so I usually put uh, two, three cans of tomatoes in there. So I went through my pantry to see what I had, and uh, I had some green enchilada sauce, and I had some salsa. So I just threw those in there to see what it was like, and uh, Lo and behold, it came out to be one of my family's favorite dishes, and we've been eating it ever since. Uh, it is an original recipe. Uh, I've never seen anything like it in a book before. Uh, maybe I'll write a cookbook someday and put it in there, because I've never seen anything like it. The tenderloin, of course, is also my own recipe. It goes very good with the Swiss steak or the tenderloin, either one. Check one of these again. Well, right now we're at medium rare, going for medium. So just a little bit longer.
Okay, folks, now we're ready to see if what we uh, made here turns out with the approval of our official food taster, Bearhead Sweeney. First, we're going to give him a little reservation Swiss steak. He says Swiss steak has never been one of his favorite foods, but we'll see how he likes this one because it has a little spice and a little flavor to it. He's a big potato eater, so I'm going to give him a couple boiled potatoes. We'll put a little sauce off the steak on the boiled potatoes. Then, in addition to that, he's going to get a special treat today. He's going to get a tenderloin as a side dish. We'll see how he takes to that. Put a little bit of sauce on it here. A little soy sauce, garlic, onion, mushroom. Pretty. Throw a couple of sliced tomatoes on there for him. Throw a couple on here. Swiss steak, I can't give you a ten. But I'd say it's right up there, right up there, uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. All that work for an eight and a half. Try the tenderloin. See how oh, you like that. Tenderloin. We haven't even tasted it yet. You don't you know. Might have, uh, you might have uh, come close, because this is how I like to say it's cooked. This is the way you cook it. Mushrooms. Well, Mr. Howard, on this I'm gonna have to give you a ten. Hooray! Hooray! I'm, hooray! I don't give them out too good, liberally, but but only an eight and a half on the Swiss steak, huh? Only an eight and a half, so that would give him a. About a nine average. <laughs> okay, I well. I recommend it to everybody. I recommend this, this recipe. It's, uh, the sauce is really quite good on the Swiss steak. And the Swiss steak is better than any Swiss steak I've eaten. But as I said previously, they come in with a, a prejudice. Well, good. Enjoy it. Hope you like it. We'll see you again next time. Thank you.